What's up everyone? How you doing? Trade periods come, trade periods gone. What an experience that was. Haven't really been able to process everything just yet. It was disappointment, then it was positivity. Let's make the best of it. There's emotions everywhere. And it's interesting because we have had such a break from the footy. And uh, it kind of reminded me why we're all cult supporters all over again, because we either are joyful or we're up in arms about something. And that's the beauty of the sport. Recapping the whole experience, it was um, it was interesting. I think just the whole year, um, my overall feeling of disappointment is still there. Uh, I'm, I'm pretty sure most of us are disappointed. Some of us have dealt with it a lot better than others, that's for sure. Um, but... I found out that I have so many different personalities um, through this experience. There's so many different layers and levels to, um, you know, the type of supporter that I am and the type of supporter that everyone is, you know, like as the, as the clock was counting down, we had 30 minutes to go. We had bets in the bag. Pitonet was in the bag. It was like, mm, nice, cool. I like it. Bets, great clubman, good for culture on the field, off the field, give us one more good year, maybe two, who knows. And Pitonet, you know, we knew that Phillips was was leaving the offer that was in front of him. He didn't accept it, went to the Bombers. Cool, we acted swiftly. Pitonet, bang, how good's this? Our list management team, they're on the ball. Look at this, they're making deals. They're getting it done before the big fishes, you know, Papley and Martin. Now, on Papley, for me, <laughs> Papley was the key Papley was the key to everything. Papley was the key out of this mess. He was the ticket. He was the ticket from being shit and mediocre, and he was the guy that was just going to help us go that next level. Thirty-seven goals, twenty-two, twenty-three years old. You know, you know, you know the story. Martin was nice, nice player, good player, nice player. Obviously, an unfilled potential. Eddie Betts pairing him with him would be a great team. Uh, Eddie Betts can really help mentor him and help get the best out of him. So from that point excitement and I think like throughout the year the messaging from the club you know you had Kane Little went on radio early this year and spoke about you know the the glaringly obvious need for us to go get a small forward and the glaringly obvious need for us to continue on with the pathway that we set out you know go to the draft for a couple of years and then really target that 23 to 28 age bracket that was really really clear. That's what we wanted to do. Those are the types of players we wanted to attract into the club. And you know, you know, Agresta had a, an interview at the draft combine talking about how we were really prepared, which doesn't really read very well right now. But anyway, um, talked about the draft, talked about how it was very deep and maybe there's a little bit of a method to the madness. I felt maybe I was misled. Maybe I just didn't read between the lines properly enough. I felt like that pick nine was always getting traded once the Stockard deal was done, but it wasn't to be the case. Anyway, trade deadline comes, um, you know, it didn't happen. We got to 10 minutes and I thought, ah, it's all part of the theater. This is just brilliant, isn't it? Sauce is gonna walk into that room with three minutes to go and he's just gonna get these deals done, all good. Then I kind of realized, hang on, we're not getting one of these guys. Joe Danaher fell through. We're not getting one of these guys. And then there was about a minute to go, 30 seconds to go. And I was like, that's when it really dawned on me. Like, fuck, we're not getting any of them. And, you know, mixed emotions, you know, the initial reaction was just like, and then part of me wanted to be like, no! I mean, it was like part of the plan. We have list managers in place. It's all good. We have a great list. Stocker, Doc. Charlie, Harry, they're all going to be better. They're all going to be back, fitter, better, and stronger. I'm sort of stuck in between one of those people, and I don't really know which one to continue on with. Um, I'm pissed off, but life goes on. I understand. It's not really the end of the world. And if there's one quote that our old man, Brendan Bolton, used to give us, and I hate to bring it up, but he's right, it's equilibrium. Never too high, never too low. Nothing is really ever as good as it seems. Nothing is ever really as bad as it seems. With that being said, we're going to move on. Yes, there's options. There's this preseason draft option that everyone seems to be talking about, which is great. Still nothing in concrete yet, but apparently that's just going to help us. You know, there's obviously pick nine that we have. I just don't like the idea of the fact that we finished 16th personally. And, you know, for a team that finished third last, to just go and get Eddie Betts and Mark Pittenet and that's it. It just doesn't sit right with me. It, I feel like, and again, I feel like I've been lied to and misled 
But if we're going to be wanting sauce and aggressive there and all these people to be taking accountability, then maybe we need to be taking accountability. Maybe we shouldn't have got sucked in. But this is what happens when you're a Carlton supporter. The first media story comes out and you think, nah, I'm not going to believe anything until it's officially declared on the Carlton website and it's done. And then Brass posts something on Big Footy and makes you believe that it's happening. And then John Ralph hears a rumor and posts it. And then you still say to yourself, no, 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 settle. Nothing's done yet. But then Sammy Edmund, Tom Brown, then you get Ricky Nixon chiming in, and then you get all these journos adding fuel to the fire, and then that little seed that they wanted to put in your mind gets put in your mind, and you think, well, where there's smoke, there's fire. Something's got to be true. By the time we get to trade deadline day, you know, you got Sauce saying we've offered a fair and reasonable deal to Sydney, um, which makes you think, right, we're on. And then at the start of the you know the deadline day, we do that pick swap with Sydney, and it's like, oh well, we're acting in good faith, so yeah, maybe Sydney can just yeah, help us out later on with Papley, I guess. Wrong. Um, it is what it is. We're all going to move on. We're all going to be fine. No one's getting sacked. No one's going to burn their membership. We're all going to turn up round one. We're going to draft some kid with pick nine, and then we're all going to forget about this day. But <sighs> there has to be some sort of faith in the professionals there, because the reality is. We're all just bloody armchair pundits. I don't really know shit. And neither do probably 98% of everyone who's watching this or supports Carlton that doesn't work for Carlton. So, yeah, you kind of got to have that that bit of faith. Um, having said that, there's just no need to come out and say what they said about Papley and Martin and fair and reasonable deals. Just don't talk. Don't do it so publicly. Um, I get it. You get the attention of the supporters and we want answers. But I mean, if, you le if you've led us to believe that we're going to get at least one of these guys and it doesn't happen, there's going to be, you know, chaos. And maybe they're willing to withstand the early chaos, you know, 24, 48 hours removed from the, the trade deadline. You know, it's a little bit chaotic. Everyone's just angry and maybe they're just willing to, to you know, bear with that with a better planning mind. But just felt like there was no need to just add the, you know, add the fuel to the, you know, the fire because it was brimming. And now we're just bursting, waiting for the moment where we're back at the top in that promised land. Fuck, we are so deluded. It's so good. Tell you what, I was so prepared for Tom Papley. I had graphics made. I had videos made. Highlights packages. Yeah, got sucked in. Lesson learnt, lesson learnt, wait until the announcement. But it's so much easier said than done to just like wait for the announcement because really we love the rumors. Tell you why, because the rumors give us hope, hope that we're gonna be out of the mess. Papley was the hope, he was the great white hope. And you know, a bit of cult and arrogance came back, might have sent a few messages to my incident supporter mates, telling them how shit they were, they're losing Joe, what a disgrace, this, that, but Anyway, that's what you get for being a Carlton supporter. <sighs> that's that. Still pretty pissed off, but, you know, I'll get over it. We'll all get over it. Love each other. It's all good. We'll go to the draft, get this kid. We'll see what happens in the preseason draft. Stocker comes back, fit and firing. We get Sam Doherty back, and we'll go from there. What did you think about trade period? Have you let the dust settle? Are you relaxed a little bit now, or are you still pissed off? Let me know in the comments below. Cheers.